Hi, this is James, and I'm coming to you from Platte River State Park in eastern Nebraska between Omaha and Lincoln. Today is March the 31st, 2017, and just wanted to uh, take you into the park while we talk about different things related to signs of the times and how to be ready for the rapture. And as I'm sure many of you have heard talk about um, different people who are on YouTube who are also watching the signs of the times. Um, the best thing we can do is stick with the Bible, let, let the Word of God be our guide in our everyday living, and to pick up our cross and follow Christ. Uh, the most important thing we can do in life is to be ready um, to meet God at any time. And as these are the end times, as many of you are well aware, uh, we have to think back about what what are the most important traits that God wants us to be demonstrating in our lives, and how can we be encouraging others to do the same. These are definitely very trying times that we're living in. Many people have fallen away as the churches have fallen away from where they used to be as far as some of them are preaching prosperity gospel these days and watered down versions of the gospel. Some of them hardly even open the Bible at all, unfortunately. Um, I hope that you're in a good church where you're learning about um, Christ and how to put him first in your life as that's the most important mission that we're on. This is uh, this life is only for a certain amount of time and this time will determine whether we're worthy through God's grace and salvation and our repentance whether we're worthy uh, to be with him we definitely don't want the default place um, so it's be ye hot or be ye cold if you're lukewarm he'll spew you out of his mouth and these days there's a lot of deception out there, and a lot of the end times is about deception. Strong delusions of different types. One of the most common being that people don't even realize the times we're in. Um, many of the worldly people who haven't gone to church or been around um, hearing the gospel have no idea what's going on. Um, even the people who are in church, many of them don't realize that we're in the end times and the urgency of the time that we live in to be sure that they're doing their best to give their life to Christ every day. Um, it's a choice that we have to make every day to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. And too often many people are distracted with the cares of this world and uh, the everyday routine and just doing whatever's at hand and not really taking time to focus on Christ and our life needs to be focused on him first and foremost for he's the one who died and rose again so that we could be saved um, by repenting of our sins and asking him into our hearts and lives and being willing to pick up our cross and follow Jesus let's take a look at Luke 21 verses 34 through 36 and take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that that day may come upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape these things that come to, shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So thinking about how easy it is to be distracted by all the important issues that we deal with in our lives, family matters, um, stress that comes up on our, on our jobs, there's a lot to keep us busy. We're under pressure and tempted to take shortcuts. We want to reflect Christ in our lives every day. Platte River State Park is a beautiful place um, to pray and walk and 
pray and meditate upon the Lord. Think about the events of the times that we live in and helps us to refocus away from other distractions. Taking a look at 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You can't serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other. In Matthew 10, we see that whosoever uh, therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. James chapter 4 reminds us that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We're going to take a walk along Stone Creek as we continue with James chapter 4. Verse 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. If you're attending a church where you're being spiritually fed and encouraged and where they're willing to speak the truth about the times that we live in and how to stay close to God in your life, that's awesome. If not, you may want to um, reconsider where you're attending church, but most importantly is our everyday walk with the Lord. Even if you're being fed well at a church that is uh, sticking close to the gospel, we still need our daily devotions to stay close to the Lord. Looking more at James chapter 4, Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. This seems like a good time to remind everyone that um, it's not all about being popular with your message. You don't want to be in the business of tickling ears. It's more important to be sticking with the Word of God and how we encourage each other so that we're walking on the path that God would want us to be on in this life and to prepare for an eternity. No one will see God without holiness. So we can't just say we're saved live however we want and expect to um, make it to heaven. So God is holding us accountable. Yes, we're not perfect, but when we pray and give our lives to him and repent of our sins and choose to follow him, God's looking for that type of commitment from us. Remember, no man is without sin, lest any man should boast. Do you remember the rich man in the Bible? And he asked what it would take to be saved. And... The Lord told him to sell all he has and to follow him, and the rich man, he couldn't do it. That's not saying that you can't be wealthy and make it to heaven, but the temptation may be stronger on people who are wrapped up in the pleasures of this life. The Lord is not a respecter of persons, so no matter what your job title, he's looking for what's in your heart. The Lord knows our heart, each and every one of us better than we even know ourselves. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. 